In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. First reading, Isaiah is a very beautiful and yet very interesting reading. This was a historical event that occurred when all of the Jewish nation that were separated into 12 tribes, when the 10 northern tribes separated from the two southern tribes because they had an infighting. As a matter of fact, they fought each other, they tried to kill each other, and they tried to destroy each other. The 10 northern tribes in today's reading were under pressure from the Assyrians. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know where to go. They didn't know what, how to deal with all of this. So where did they go to try to seek help? Did they go to the Lord? Did they go to God? Did they go for faith? Did they go for salvation? No. And the most interesting place that they went to was Egypt. It wasn't too long before. I mean, a few hundred years. But Egypt was always a symbol of slavery and sin. The Egyptians were under... I'm sorry, the Egyptians were slave owners of the Jews. And it took so many different miracles for God to save the Jewish nation from the Egyptians, to take them out of the Egyptians, to save them after he took them out, and then to prepare them. And then there's a whole long story behind what happened. But the interesting thing is when they were in the desert, immediately after they left Egypt, whenever they were not satisfied, they always said, we wish we can go back to Egypt. Okay. Well, this is, again, if we look at it in a deeper sense, and we look at vices, we look at things that make us go back to our slavery, to our sinfulness, Things that make us want to, whether they're addictions of sorts, chemically, or addictions to sin, or maybe a bad habit that sometimes I don't know how to kick back. So here's the question. What causes me to go back to my vice, to my slavery? I want to get over all of my slavery. I want to get over everything that enslaves me. I want to get over all of my sins. But think about it. What causes you to go back to the very sin that you want to overcome? There's so many different reasons, but when you get to the reason, then you're able to deal with it. Some of the reasons are, number one, anxiety. I don't know how to deal with problems. I don't know how to deal with pain. This is the easiest way for me to deal with pain. I know it's not good for me. I know that it's going to hurt me, but at this moment, I am in an emotional rage. And I don't know, and I don't want to deal with certain things, so I'll go back to these certain chemicals, to these certain actions, because these give me some kind of immediate relief. What else causes me to go back to my vices? Fear. Today, Egypt, I mean, I should say the Jews went back to Egypt out of fear. They don't know how to deal with the Assyrians. They don't know how to deal with anything. Now, they've always, in their wars, when they had God on their back, an army of 30 can destroy whatever because God wants to tell them, it's not you. I'll do this for you, and I want to do this for you. Don't trust yourselves, or else you become arrogant. Go back to the vices. When you are able to overcome certain vices for a so, certain amount of time, what happens as a temptation? I got over it. Yeah, 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 with God's help, with God's help. But look, this is what I did. This is how I overcame this. This is how I stopped doing this. What's the earliest temptation for us? Arrogance. Once we get into arrogance, guess what happens? The vice makes its way back and sometimes even worse vices, even worse sins will come. And through the back door, and all of a sudden we find ourselves fallen even worse than before. But this arrogance, this is what causes us to continuously, a lot of times, to no longer look at God for help to overcome our sins and our vices. As I mentioned today, Judea always was fear. So they went back to their masters to try to deal with their fears. 
And God says, I'm going to shame you with that. I'm going to show you the very thing that destroyed you in the past, that I saved you from. That's the thing you go back to instead of me. Instead of me, and by the way, when they go back to Egypt, not only do they go back to Egypt, but they had already started to worship other pagan gods and stones and, you know, and statues and idols and so many bad things. That was the problem. But is that the only, there's so many different other reasons that causes us to go back to vices. In today's letter, there's something else. Now, this is what the Lord says that these, sometimes these people, don't want truth because it's too difficult to live in the truth. I have a friend of mine who took her many years to overcome some of her addictions. But when she began to become sober, she said it was the hardest time in my life because it was difficult. It wasn't smooth. It wasn't happy. It was a lot of trouble. It was easier, in her words, it was easier to be addicted because at least I didn't have to struggle. I didn't have to struggle like the way I did in my sobriety in the beginning. But here's, in a different way, here's why the children of Israel refused. They refused, in today's letter, in the first reading, God says, through Isaiah, they refused to listen to instruction. They don't want to see. They don't want to hear prophets telling them this is wrong, this is right. What do they want? Speak smooth things to us. See visions that deceive. I, mean, I don't know why, but this is almost like, I remember, you know, probably 20 years ago, there was, I don't know if they're still on or not, smooth jazz. When they used to say that, I don't know, one of the channels, I don't know if you watched or listened to the radio, it's, it's that kind of a thing. I just want to smoke my marijuana, just sit back and just be comfortable. Give me some smooth jazz. That's what I want. This is life. And this is what also causes them to go back to their vices, not knowing this is going to destroy them. How do we deal with our vices? St. Paul's reading today, the letter, comes out and he says to the Thessalonians, Hey, I'm worried about you. I didn't know much what was going on. I heard there were bad things happening. I sent Timothy, check up on you guys. But I was so happy when he came. That's why you're not giving up. That even though it doesn't feel smooth, that even though you're struggling so many different ways, that you don't know how to deal with your, let's put it in today's first reading, with your fears, with your vices, you're still holding on to the Lord. And he calls them, you are the crown of our glory. Not because you're sitting back and everything's okay because you haven't given up. And that's exactly what Jesus in today's reading, today's gospel says from the gospel of Luke. He comes out and he says, pray at all times and don't give up. Don't give up. It sometimes becomes easier to go back to your sinful ways. It doesn't have to be a chemical addiction. It could be any kind of sin or vice. It could be foul language. And there are times when a foul language is in its place. No. Not at all. And then there is these times when, you know, I just want to be entertained, you know, and different kinds of entertainment that pleases the body and the pleasure. And it, it just, yeah, I just want to relax. I just want to take the edge off. No. Certain vices? No. Because what will these do? It will destroy you. Today it feels good. This moment feels good. And for the most of us, after we do it, oh, what did I do? Why did I do it? What caused me to fall? And then the guilt, and then the darkness, and then the devil really plays his game. You're no good. You shouldn't pray. You shouldn't go back to church. You shouldn't confess. You're a liar. You're a hypocrite. And of course, God comes out and says, no, 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 come. You're dirty. I want to clean you. You hurt me. You just put a nail in my hand, but I want to show you the nail mark. And I want to heal you. So one way to deal with vice, pray. Don't give up. Another way to deal with vice, even if you fall, God forbid, get up. 
immediately get up. Get on your knees immediately and pray and say, Lord, I'm filthy, I'm dirty, I'm ugly. But you still love me. And you still want to help me and you still want to cleanse me and I don't get you. But I don't need to fully get you as long as I am owned by you. That's the important thing. And yet that's what Jesus comes out and says towards the end of the last part that I read in today's gospel. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? See, that's faith. It doesn't make excuses. And on the other hand, it doesn't give up. Because it's not just about me wanting to overcome, but he wants me to overcome. And he doesn't want me to give up. Therefore, with all our vices, with all, all our sinful ways, with all our temptations to go and get rid of them the easy way, the fast way, go back to our certain ways, especially during these weakest moments of the day or our lives, this is when I'm in pain, be in pain. Be in temptation. Be weak. Seek the Lord. Not once, not twice. Some answer. Well, maybe God wants you to seek and not just ask. There's a difference. Asking, hey, can you give me this? No response. Okay, forget you. Seek is continuously, like the lady in today's gospel. Jesus says, if this lady goes to this evil man and she keeps knocking and keeps knocking, and she annoys him to get her way, how much more God who loves you this guy is a sinful man. He doesn't care about man. He doesn't care about God. How much God who loves you. But why does he allow this? Because he wants you to grow in faith. Not like a spoiled child. Hi God, can I have this done? Thank you. And I'll forget about God. I'll only go to him when I ask. But to consistently seek God is what helps us, transforms us, and what helps us also to recognize his beauty and his genuine love for us. For this, for all our vices in sinful times and in good times, and at all times, we seek the Lord, we seek and we proclaim with our hearts and with our lips, blessed be the name of Jesus, both now and forever. Amen.